are not certain of the exact date the last big tree began to fall. Whether it was yesterday, tomorrow, or the day after. We do know that we have been cutting our trees for 300 years, building a nation, and building it mostly with wood. I'm the bull of the woods, I'm an iron, I'm a logger, and I've cut the big timber for many a year. Oh, my axe sinks in deep, and my saw's like a razor. I can knock down any ox, and there's nothing I fear. Oh, I started in Maine, I cut through the Dakotas, moved into Montana and old Idaho. Took Oregon on, and in California, sawed through the Sierras in 20-foot snow. But now the big timber is all but forgot, and I'm an old logger, nowhere to go. The trees were huge. They stretched on forever. And then it happened. just didn't realize how quickly the big trees, the old growth, was going. How much smaller the logs were becoming. How much we were wasting in the sawmills cutting round logs into rectangular boards. In later years, we had learned how to peel the logs with giant lathes, and we call those thin peelings veneers. When we glued them together and applied heat and pressure, they became plywood, an excellent material for siding, roof, and floor decking and other uses. We also glued larger pieces of wood together and made laminated beams which could be substituted for big timbers. But there was no substitute for the 2x4s, 6s, 8s, 10s, 12s, and small timbers, the structural lumber so vital to the construction industry. And as the logs became smaller, the problems with knots, twist, slope of grain, and other defects became larger. As each board was graded, fewer and fewer pieces could meet the requirements for high-grade structural material. For 30 years, the big lumber companies and government research laboratories had been working to create laminated veneer lumber. They were partially successful, but they couldn't manufacture it economically. Then, in 1970, a Boise, Idaho man named Art Trotner came up with the answers. Trotner was co-founder and head of research and development for Trust Joist Corporation. His invention of the open web, wood and steel trust joist, had gotten the company started in 1960. And by 1970, it was producing several versions of that product, plus a new plywood joist called the I-Series, and had become the nation's largest manufacturer of lightweight roof and floor structural systems. But here was something entirely new, with a potential that seemed almost unlimited. However, it's a long way from the laboratory to mass production, and it took more than two years to build the machinery, and a plan to house it in Eugene, Oregon. Troutner called his new product micro lamb lumber and used one eighth or one tenth inch veneers as the raw material. Purchased green, they are first run through big dryers and then graded by a new electronic process called ultrasonic analysis. Then 
Then they are fed into a 90-foot-long continuous traveling hot press, which has a special infeed, layup, and glue spread mechanism. The veneers enter the press with a grain of all sheets parallel to their length, and after the adhesive is applied, the sheets are joined by a series of lapped, staggered end joints. As the veneers travel through the press, precise amounts of heat and pressure are applied, and they exit in the form of boards or billets, which are 80 feet long, two feet wide, and either one and a half, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, or two and a half inches thick. The resulting product is a vast improvement on natural lumber. A structural material with all of wood's natural advantages, but with consistent high strength in every piece, an impossibility with solid sawn lumber. The wide width, long lengths, and varied thickness also make it extremely versatile, and it can be cut to any length, with each piece maintaining its consistent strength. Since it is also oven dried and made up of many layers, it'll not normally warp, shrink, or twist. But perhaps one of its greatest features is that micro lamb can be made from a wide variety of wood species, even from trees once considered of little value as lumber. And by peeling instead of sawing the log, anywhere from 25 to 50 percent more usable lumber can be secured from each log a tremendously significant saving of one of our most vital natural resources. Then too, although veneers have the same defects found in solid saw and lumber, these defects are so scattered in micro lamb that they have very little effect on the finished billet. A continuous program of hundreds of tests, certified by independent laboratories, have produced a vast database of tensile strength, moisture content, stiffness, bending, and compression, both parallel and perpendicular to grain. The testing and performance history has proven that microlam is superior to the vast majority of structural lumber. Growing demand has led to the building of a second large plant at Junction City, Oregon, and others will follow adjacent to major timber supplies. Meanwhile, with over 300 million equivalent board feet now in use, train and truck loads of micro lamb are moving out across America in ever-increasing numbers. A good share of the production goes into the company's own products into the I-series roof and floor joist with micro lamb flanges and a plywood web. Originally 80 feet long, these joists can be quickly sawn to any length. And into the open web series for spanning greater distances and carrying heavier loads. and also into the Microlam I-Series residential joist for floor systems, a newly developed product which replaces the solid sawn 2x10 and provides a far better in-place value. Another growing use is in mobile home trusses, where it is far superior to solid sawn wood alternatives. Long lengths, width, and great strength make micro lamb an ideal material for scaffold planking, and that market is growing by leaps and bounds. And as decking material for ships, trucks, and railroad cars, this new laminated veneer lumber offers many advantages over ordinary wood or steel. Another promising new development is the Microlam heavy duty eye beam.
And in a short time, tall transmission towers made from microlam may march across the land. Already it has been used to form the world's largest wood barrel arch over the University of Idaho Stadium, a clear span of 400 feet, rising 150 feet over the playing field. Here, microlam was combined with two-inch tubular steel webs to form a trust arch capable of carrying unbalanced snow loads of 70 pounds per square foot and withstanding winds of 110 miles per hour. The design and materials for this project cost less than $1 million and it was erected in just 24 working days. So unusual is the structure that it was chosen by the American Society of Civil Engineers as the outstanding structural engineering achievement of 1976. But the story of Microlam is just beginning. Wherever men are planning, designing, building, in business, education, government, communications, transportation. New uses, new ways are being found to utilize this unique new product. A product which offers unlimited lengths, wide widths, varying thickness, superior and consistent strength, stability without warping, twisting or shrinking. All this, plus a very significant contribution to the conservation of America's forests, makes microlam one of the most significant advances of the century in the utilization of wood. Laminated veneer lumber, microlam, another great example of creative engineering in structural wood by Trust Joist.